Hydrocarbons are the foundation of modern society. Everything from the cars we drive to the clothes we wear is powered, created or delivered by their energy. That means almost everything we make and consume indirectly creates carbon dioxide, the byproduct of using fossil fuels. In fact, every day we create enough carbon dioxide to cover an island the size of Manhattan with a four kilometer high pyramid. Did you know the making and use of a smartphone creates the equivalent of 100 kilograms of carbon dioxide? That's about the same as burning around a third of a barrel of oil. So how does society meet the growing demand for energy while limiting carbon dioxide emissions? The challenge is to create an economic incentive that controls emissions without limiting the goods and services that hydrocarbons deliver. A solution is for governments to implement carbon pricing policies. There are two main ways of doing this. The first option is for governments to tax emissions, which directly establishes a price for emitting carbon dioxide. This tax can be offset by a reduction in other taxes, which is what they've done in British Columbia. The alternative is to cap emissions, then allow a price to develop through the trading of allowances. This is the route adopted in Europe. Both routes are effective and can drive innovation and change. Getting governments to create a price for carbon is the most direct way of changing the existing equation. For example, this approach will stimulate the development of low carbon technologies, like carbon capture and storage or help lower carbon fuels, like natural gas, replace higher carbon ones. Carbon capture and storage can limit the amount of carbon dioxide being emitted when we use hydrocarbons to fuel power stations and industry. Emissions are captured and injected deep into the ground. Carbon pricing policies are designed to change the cost of goods and services, favouring those that result in lower emissions. That is why they work so well. Both the tax and trade-based approach deliver new revenue to the government, which can be used to ensure that consumers are not left out of pocket. The end result should be a virtuous circle, which sees emissions fall whilst maintaining living standards. But a price needs to be put on carbon globally for it to be truly effective. Well-designed policy frameworks have to be in place with national and regional governments taking the lead, and the United Nations providing support. In fact, globally connected carbon pricing policies are an essential tool in tackling climate change. They'll kickstart a range of measures to shift energy investment worldwide and help the least developed economies build sustainable energy systems. And with strong political backing, their implementation will be straightforward. This in turn creates opportunities for low carbon fuels, products and services, all of which makes carbon pricing a powerful, business-focused measure for limiting emissions. Like to know more about David Hone's views on carbon pricing mechanisms? Why not grab a copy of his latest book?